All right, so we're ready to start your dish now. What are we making? Yes, uh, I think that maybe you can name it afterwards. <laughs> okay. It's sort of something that I've done. I throw together whatever's in the house. Uh, I'm the kind of person I get tired of certain foods very, very quickly. And I stumble upon uh, these packages of, of crab meat that's uh, frozen. It's already shelled and everything. Right. And yeah, it's very yeah. cheap, actually. Yeah, this is local um, crab meat. Yes, it's this swamp and crab. And it's real crab meat, actually, mm. not the fake crab meat that's white Which, and pink. And soya based most yeah. often. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is actually, it's, it's very cheap, it's very easy to work with, it cooks very quickly. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I go for it, as I said before. Anything that's the easiest thing to do, that's what I go with. Okay. And uh, one pack of this is about maybe about twenty dollars or something like that, and you could feed at least two people, right. depending on well. So <laughs> right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a sort of a crab and potato uh, thing. Right. Uh, okay. It, it, I know it sounds a bit stupid now, but when you see it come out, um, it'll taste it, good. It'll taste good. All right. That's I, the important thing. I hope. I as long as we have numbers for the hospital. <laughs> Right, Tell so self deprecating. The first thing we need to do is to um, mash these potatoes. Okay, how about if I do that for you? All right, okay. All right. I'll, get, I'll mash the potatoes. Uh, it's also important to note that well, the, this crab, because it's frozen, it retains a lot of water when it's stored. You have to drain it properly, squeeze out all of the water because the crab on its own does not have a, a whole lot of flavor, so you really have to help it along as much as you can. So and you don't want the water to no, wash no, away you, all you your have to You have to drain out the water properly. And one of the ways to help along the flavor is to use a lot of our um, own local seasoning. You don't have to put any fancy chop on these. Just get it as small as you can. So uh, that's what, shadow benny? Yeah, this is uh, shadow benny, which uh, is particularly good with seafood, but uh, I suppose Trinidadians use it in everything. And um, it's, of course, readily available whenever you're mowing your lawn. You could just uh, uh, just sweep up the, the cuttings and put them in your food because everybody's lawn is half shadow benny, yes. half actual grass. Yeah, mine is more like half grass, half timari. Well, that's a good blend as well, if you, if you, as long as you don't walk around barefoot. No. Right, so we just mix that in with the crab. You just put everything in and you throw it into the oven and you go to continue to argue with your spouse <laughs> until that's done. <laughs> and some... Um, Listen, but you have to, get, you have to send good vibes if foods away, you know, otherwise, you know. Yes. You have to, you never read this book like Water for Chocolate, where no, she's uh, basically the writer. What she was saying is that when you cook food with love, then love is what comes out and then when you... Mm -hmm. I believe that. That's very postcard-like, but I suppose... <laughs> Um, I'll take your so word Too much sentimentality. If you no, the that. thing is that <laughs> most most of the time, most of the time, when I experiment with these dishes, they come out quite well. Uh, Whether you're cooking them with love or not. Well, uh, well, it's so hard to come by love these days. But most people are uh, most <laughs> How much people. Much do you want me to put in this? Uh, uh, enough to flavor, not enough to uh, induce a heart attack. <laughs> Okay, I am kind of heart attack inducing. How about that for you? Is that that that'll do it. That'll do it. Like uh, another thing to understand about a lot of these dishes is they're, they're not really what you call health food. <laughs> no. But you don't really you're not fixing to eat them every day. No. It's just something that's easy to uh, to do when you you um, can't be bothered with the line at the the KFC or whatever. Yeah, no, but you and know you have I have to tell you though that. Um, when I, I feel best is when I'm cooking my own food and I'm eating food that I've made. Um, in my body, you know, I just, I find, like, if I buy food too often, I start to feel kind of junky and crabby because it's like, ooh, what am I eating? I don't know. Well, yeah, I've often so thought about it that way. my grandmother believed in butter, you know, and she lived to be 82. You know, I've been thinking about that. What, there, there was a story about this um, kayak I was preparing for the Olympics. 38 years old, healthy as you can imagine, and died of a heart attack at 38. I tell you. You know? So should I put some cream in this? Yes, because okay. uh, we're not preparing for the Olympics. <laughs> no, we're not preparing for the Olympics. Uh, Michelle says she wants to be on the archery team in the next four years, but I don't. Um, I don't have any um, Olympic expectations. That should. But well, what are you putting in there, sweetheart? What is a cooking show? We have to tell people. Right. Well, okay. the the typical green seasonings. You have your parsley, parsley. your sive. I put sive. in some shadow benny, and right. uh, I'm putting. I've forgotten what this is. What is this again? The stick. Time. The time that sticks in your teeth when you um, pull it out of the soup. <laughs> Right, well, I prefer to shred off the leaves um, for this particular dish as opposed to retrieving the twigs <laughs> from the back of your throat. <laughs> I afterwards. believe in retrieving twigs, actually. <laughs> I can't, that's a bit of a bother. Um, so, 
Right, yeah. so we have this properly seasoned. I'm putting some salt in the mashed potato. Yes, uh, and, uh, and I'm going to put some pepper in there. And I'm also going to cut up these uh, seasoning peppers are really very um, good for flavoring the crab as well. And I see that um, you have a, a jalapeno there, yes. or a japalino. <laughs> so we can toss that in as well, because it'll give it a bit of a bite without it being too hot. Right, okay. Right. Let me have a taste of this mashed potato, see how it go in here. So this is butter, this is very rich. Butter, cream. Yeah, I'm not good at smooth mashed potatoes. I don't have the patience. Oh. Like, I wouldn't be good at pastry, I just don't have the patience. It has to be quick. You find that about Trinidad food though, you know, like Kalaloo, when you just have to pick the Kalaloo and peel the stems and grate the coconut, very labor intensive. I don't know, you know, the odd thing is that I know this might be sacrilege to say this on a show that airs in Trinidad. I've never really been very fond of Kalaloo. Oh, I love Kalaloo. Uh, Are you kidding me? I don't get it. I mean, aesthetically, it's horrifying. <laughs> and the taste isn't really, I don't know. Maybe I'm not a true Trini, but I, but I think I am. But I just can't bear it. I can't bear it. <laughs> I love Kalaloo. Actually, I know quite a few people who do like Kalaloo, but... My mom makes a boss kalaloo. The only way I ever crab. touched it when I was young is if there was crab in it. Yes. And then I used to, to actually take the crab out and give it a thorough rinse. Yeah. You lied. You used to wash I used off to the crab before you ate it. I used to wash off the kalaloo for the crab <laughs> before I ate it. Lost. That is terrible. That's sad. So you didn't suck the kalaloo off the crab. You no, 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 no. My I, goodness. I couldn't handle that. So we'll put in one jalapeno. Careful with the, um, the seeds. Yeah, the seeds. Because the other day I used a jalapeno and I rubbed it on my face. And, well, so you, you used a jalapeno and rubbed it on your face. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is not exactly the quite the... Okay, that wasn't the actual <laughs> sequence of events. Just to so let the viewers know, it's not a normal application for this particular pepper. Um, rubbing it on one's face <laughs> no. after cutting. Basic, no, let me um, refine that a little bit. But you know what they say, the, the seeds are the hottest part of the pepper, most peppers, yes. as they say on the, the food network there. And some salt in there and some pepper? Yes. Um, what else? That's really, well, I see now we have a whole, uh, the celery salt there, so yeah, I guess we can just put in a salt. pinch of celery salt as we've already added salt. You want some cayenne pepper? Yeah, that's great. Yeah, some cayenne pepper. I, had, I, the, I see you have red pe pepper flakes there, which are actually a lot hotter than people think. Think. Yeah, they are. So um, you'd have to be very uh, conservative when you're, you're putting in your red pepper flakes if right. you decide to put them in. Okay. Um, I'm going to add some sour cream to my mashed potato. Yes. What are you going to do? Well, um, actually, I'm now I'm trying to remember if I used to mix the crab in with the, um, the potato, but I don't want the but I was thinking of, of layering the crab at the bottom okay. and putting some, that way the potato doesn't overwhelm the crab. Okay. Um, and let me just put a little bit of olive oil. To so this potato has <laughs> cream, so butter, and sour cream. The, all of the right ingredients to get you to the nearest nursing home. <laughs> you know, like I said, uh, this is not the kind of thing that you're going to eat every day. So, so we've got a little gratin dish. Lay, layer the um, crab at the bottom of the dish. Okay, so there you have that there. Am I just gonna plonk this on top? Yeah, just okay. and uh, spread it out. And not, you, you probably won't use all. Okay, you don't right. want me to use all? No, no. Okay. Uh, you, you've <laughs> almost used all. Uh, okay. How's that for you? Okay, that, that's good. No, you're going ahead and using all. all right. Are you buffing me in my own kitchen? <laughs> Lord! Oh, I'm ready to, right, so <laughs> then you just, just spread it out. And um, I just thought of this while I was sitting there. You, you can actually take some of these leftover, well, I'll show you in a minute. The leftover croutons that are seasoned. Yeah, we have some seasoned croutons that you buy in the supermarket. Get this out of the way. Yeah, so you're gonna paddle them? Yes, I'm gonna paddle them. I don't think spanking them. Oh, actually. <laughs> Pretty good. Very good, we'll be on to your children. <laughs> yes. All right, so we have that there. Yes. And we have some Parmesan that we sprinkle liberally over. So these are just like fancy breadcrumbs, really. Well, yes, very fancy, Crispy and they will give. Um, so, and you, you were just not. Let me make sure that we have enough there. Okay. So. <laughs> right. I'm hovering here. Right. So then we could uh, sprinkle that on top. 
Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> right, and um, that is it. All right, And then cool. you toss it in the oven. For about? Uh, for about. Uh, oh, half an hour. Well, uh, yeah, I'll say about. 25 minutes. Yeah, 25 to half an hour. Okay. Um, doesn't hurt to check on it after 25 minutes. So. Okay. So just remember that the crab is actually going to cook quite quickly, so yeah. you don't need to, and the potatoes are already cooked. The potatoes are already cooked, cooked so you so, don't, yeah. So it's we're doing about 25 minutes at 350. Right.